Hi guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. It's currently 11 o'clock and we're gonna go for some mullet. We've got three hours till high tide. What I'm using is my 12 foot rod today, 10 pound main line, eight pound fluorocarbon trace with a little flute. And I'll give you a run through of that later on. And what I've got is a big bottle of fish oil and loads of bread for chum. Now I've seen mullet here in the past and that's why I'm here. There's a big deep well at the back here. So hopefully we can get one. So stay tuned, it's Smash Fishing. For my chum, what I'm using, I've got porridge oats in here, but you can use straight bread if you want to. There's porridge oats, bread, and this is pure fish oil, Manhaden oil. And that stuff brings fish in from a mile away. I'm hoping that I can find a couple of garfish today. You don't need a lot of this in the water, just a little splash. Because the idea is more bread, more mullet, more fish oil, and the more you're gonna attract things like mackerel, garfish. I've even caught bass this way as well. I've caught bass on bread. <laughs> I'll give you a picture of that now, guys. And the idea of this is you want it in a really big pulp so then when you throw it in the water you're not feeding the fish you're just bringing them in it's sort of it's a, it's a ground bait essentially what you do for the charm once you've got it all pulped up you don't want too many really big bits and what you're doing get a big spoonful and you're just for the first part you want to chuck a good few spoonfuls in just to try and get the fish in in the bay and this will attract them from a long way as well. And we've seen some big mullet here when we've been bass fishing. So hopefully we can pull one up today. <laughs> what I'm using today is a 12 foot barbell rod because it's got that lovely soft tip for uh, playing the fish. Pen Pursuit 3000 size reel with 10 pound line on to a small three gram float, eight pound fluorocarbon trace to a size eight hook. And that is all it is really. And hopefully with all of this and a piece of bread, we can hook one of those big Vladimir mullets. Always good to use white bread. I've never, I've never actually caught a mullet on brown bread before. If anyone knows any reason why, I take it because the fish don't want to be healthy. They'd rather eat the white bread and get all fat. <laughs> and what, the depth I'm fishing today is only four foot because I've got a big reef in front of me and if the fish takes it, uh, it's gonna die for that reef. So we're gonna have a bit of fun today to see how it goes. Lovely relaxing day. First catch of the day, guys. <laughs> I lost a big mullet a minute ago. I was FaceTiming Sam and my rod just took off. Oh, really gutted about that. Hopefully there's some more because it wasn't on long. That took some line. There you go. Little common goby. Get that one gone. Get some more bread on. Just before you throw your float out, to avoid them spooking from the splash of the float, throw a bit of chum out and that will keep them busy. And then get a little bit extra, straight over the top. And hopefully, that will put them on a nice feeding frenzy. Oh yeah, giving a good old little fight. I don't know what it is, it might be a rat. What is it? Hey, little baby one. Oh, he's off! <laughs> Always very important. As soon as you catch a fish, guys, get big spoonfuls of chum and just whack it out there. And what this does is all the other all the other mullet that's around, they'll be spooked at the moment, but then with all this scent in the water, they'll forget about it and start feeding again. A lot better fish. Oh yeah, take that for a run, baby! Woohoo! Hopefully we can keep him on. Oh, 
Oh, the way they kite in that tide is immense. Come on. Hopefully we can keep them on, guys. It's a good mother. That's a beautiful monarch right there. Oh, I'm gonna get a better get a better place to show you guys. Hell yeah! What an absolutely lovely fish this one is. Oh, after losing two fish as well, I lost that little one. I wasn't bothered about it. It was only about half a pound. And then uh, I hooked one when I was on FaceTime to Sam, and it must have run 20 yards just like this one did. Oh yeah, this is a really fat fish. Hooked right in the bottom of the lip. Check that out, guys. What absolutely cracking mullet that one is. I'm going to keep this one for the barbecue. And while we're fishing, we're going to cook up some mullet. Come on, baby. This fish wasn't coming off too easy. Beautiful. Just one last show there, guys. What absolutely cracking mullet. I've got a little rock pool down here, but I'm going to keep it in. But I'm going to weigh it first. Oh, absolutely chirping with that. Oh, my float's been dipping under so many times and I just kept missing fish. And then wallet, this big boy comes along. All right, in pounds. Look at that. That's three pounds dead, that mullet. That's a perfect eating size. So I'll keep that one. If it was any bigger, I probably would have let it go. But a three pound mullet, that is an ideal size that. I'm absolutely chirping. So what I'm gonna do is chuck him in the rock pool down here and we're keeping for the catch and cook. Gonna get some lovely fillets off this mullet. What a beauty. If it was any bigger, I definitely would have released it. But a three pound fish, we can get some nice, some really nice fillets off that. And it's a good job I brought the barbie with me. A good little trick for mullet fishing. If you start, if your float starts bobbing under and you're using fairly large pieces of bread, if you just take a nice sliver off, just like this, you lay your hook inside, you wrap it over and squeeze where the bend of the hook is until it bites your nail. And what that does is, as soon as the fish takes it, it's automatically got a lip hook. And that's what I did there. I downsized my bread because I knew there was mullet there because my float kept going under, but I couldn't hook them. So I downsized my bread to something like that with the hook exposed and wallet got the slab straight away. What I'm doing at the moment, because we've got a right to left tide, I'm casting over to my right. And as it swings round, I'm paying out just a little bit of line at a time. So there's a little bow in, my, in, in the line to the float and then if something gets it, you haven't got too much slack to hook into it. Come on you beast, hopefully we can get another one guys, that was sick. We got a beautiful day, lovely view of the islands in the background and you can't beat that. <laughs> Come on I'm bothered, let's get another one. What I'm doing now guys, probably worst part of a mullet is the scales, they get absolutely everywhere. So I've come away from my swim for a bit, I've heavily, heavily chummed the whole lot. So what I'm going to do is just start prepping this fish. I put him out of his misery before, because obviously I knew I was going to cook him, so I don't want to be cruel. And always, if you keep a mullet for the dinner table, always descale it on the beach otherwise you're gonna have a messy home they seem to flick up everywhere 
So that's it. You're just descaling it, get everything off, both sides. This is a lovely fat fish as well. It's gonna be a lot of meat on this. So there we go. That's our fish completely descaled now. It's nice and smooth. What I'm doing now, guys, we've got our fish here. And what we're gonna do is take some fillets off and I'm gonna keep the head of this for uh, my crab wheels. So what you're doing is cutting upwards towards the head because there's a lot of meat inside the mullet head here. You go up towards the head and then you run down the backbone. This is not the sharpest knife in the world. There you go all the way down. The last part of the tail you can go straight across. Beautiful. And all you're doing is just running along the backbones until the fillet just comes off the bones. And that's it. You're just following the bones around, trying to get it as tight, as tight to the bones as you can. And avoid opening up the stomach cavity. And that there is an ideal piece of meat. There we go. And once that's washed off, that's an ideal meal for anyone really. This will feed two people. So what I'm gonna do is get the last one done now and I'll show you the next part. As you can see, you get a really healthy piece of meat off these. It's not a bad filleting job considering my knife's been battered from all the bait fishing. <laughs> but that's it. And you see the stomach cavity here, you don't want to pop that really. So you just want this top loin, I'll call it. The, the thickest part of the meat. And that there is an ideal crab pot bait. It stinks like hell. And all we're doing now is just rinsing it off. There's not much of a bloodline in mullet which is actually quite handy. As you can see, you got beautiful white meat there. What are you doing? Just washing off the best of the uh, blood that you can. Right, let's give them a good rinse off. And look at that. That fried in a frying pan would be absolutely delicious. Beautiful. And that was pretty clean. Lovely fresh white meat. I actually prefer mullet to bass to be honest with you because the meat is so it's a bit more firmer than what bass is. There we go. So we're gonna get a bit of tin foil, double it up. Beautiful. Get our fillets, present them nicely in the middle, and that there is ready for the Barbie baby. So what I've got here, I've got the good old garlic salt, my favorite at the moment. And I'm gonna sprinkle that over the top. And then I've got a big old chunk of Guernsey butter, real Guernsey butter. Absolutely delicious this is. So what I'm gonna do is just spread a bit of that round and the fish will cook in that. And I can, I can bet any money this is gonna taste really bloody good. Excuse my French. My butter's melted, it's so hot today. And all I'm doing, I'm just gonna wrap this up, get the butter spread around a little bit. There we go. And we've got one little patty ready for the fire. Can't wait for this one. We have fire! <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is wait for these coals to warm up, guys. And then we're gonna get our little patty of our fish on the fire. While our fire's getting ready to cook, I've been chumming up the swim. So hopefully the mullet have built up a bit of confidence and are willing to take a bait. 
it's high tide now so we haven't got so much of a movement so hopefully the bait will sit there come on you mullet be nice to catch another one a lot of our coals have all gone white now so that's an ideal time to start cooking what we got we've got our patty and that goes straight on the fire nothing special and we leave that cook for about 20 minutes and we'll give it a check and see how it goes so it's going to be steamed in garlic salt and butter and it's going to taste delicious smell this already for oh, hot just gonna flip it over guys let it cook that side and we're ready to go just gonna check this a little bit see how we're looking it smells amazing if only we had smell of vision guys and check that out look how white and flaky that meat is that's perfectly cooked that mullet so i set the camera down and we're going to be eating good today come on you beauty fresh mullet baby i haven't actually eaten mullet in quite a while now it's a nice little treat and there you go guys that is what you call a fresh meal let's get a nice piece See what the vert is. Oh, look at that. Check that out. Perfectly flaky white meat. It's a bit firmer than what bass is from what I remember. Mm. And it hasn't got a really strong fishy taste either. It's delicious. I want to shove this all in my mouth, but I know it's gonna, I'm going to regret it. Here we go, guys. Look at that. Falls apart. I forgot how good mullet really was. Just simple cooking. Just a bit of garlic salt, bit of Guernsey butter. And there's, there is literally barely any bones in this. It's just a few pin bones in the middle, but you could even cut those or pull those out if you filleted it. But I'm not that bothered. I can't actually find one bone. I can't find one bone, guys. Just picking through it here. I can't see any bones whatsoever. And as you can see, how big and chunky the meat is. That's amazing. This is what you call lunchtime. I bet a few lads are going to think twice about mullet now. <laughs> As you can see, it holds really well on a fork. Oh, I seriously forgot how good this was. I'm going to continue to mullet fish for the next couple of hours. I'm still stranded on a rock at the moment. I knew I was going to get cut off, but I knew this rock's really safe. I've fished this a lot in the past. But hey hey, we lost a big mullet. I was FaceTiming Sam. And uh, I see my mullet go and I hooked into it and it just went off like a steam train. And then the hook pulled out. That's the problem with mullet sometimes. Is because uh, they're such small hooks, if you don't hook them properly, they'll pop off. Oh, there you go. That's the bones that run up the middle of the fish. And they're quite big, so you'll see them really easily. Apart from that, there's there's no other bones in the side meat it's all big flesh just like that you can take big chunks off like this and you'll have no bones whatsoever hands down i reckon this is better than bass uh, leave it in your in your comments what you think guys mm. oh that's amazing a bit of that garlic sauce there as well it's what you call a lunch. I can't believe I can't believe I actually got one. After that little fish that popped off, I thought, oh, we're not going to get a decent one. And before you know it, wham. 
that is that is to die for that really is that good i reckon a bit of ginger or fresh lemon on there would make that a brilliant meal in a restaurant that would be amazing so i'm going to finish this mullet now guys and hopefully we can catch one in the next couple of hours hell yeah that's what's left of the mullet guys i'm absolutely stuffed after that two fillets that's a lot to eat got a few dregs left see the skin and bones underneath there there's literally hardly any bones in the mullet i forgot how how little bones were actually in that i think i found one two i found three bones out of those two fillets just goes to show what a brilliant meal you always got to dispose of your barbecues properly what i always like to do just like drag it in water I really want to cool this down. You don't want to leave these rounds on a beach or anything like that. So what I do is just fill it with water and then leave it upside down to upside down to drain out. And you can just go up, put that in the bin at the top of the beach. Good thing to note about mullet. You see inside here, all of that is just seaweed. So it shows what they feed on. A lot of seaweed thought I'd show you guys and the inside of their stomach is jet black so you can see there but all of this is interesting to me his full his whole stomach was just full of seaweed there's no crabs or shrimps or anything it was just just all weed so that's all for today's episode guys I had a right blast today lost that big fish when I was facetiming Sam but made up with it with a nice three pounder perfect eating sized mullet and it tastes delicious it was just like i remember not much bones really meaty fish it really is uh, bass has got a bit more of a flake to it but mullet has got more of a, a meatiness if that makes sense it's absolutely delicious nonetheless you know, i have to redo my reel i dropped it on the rocks a minute ago it's a bit scratched up and i've dented my line so needs new line on it so stay tuned for the next episode if you like my channel like and subscribe there's going to be plenty more to come and there'll be foraging tides in a in couple of weeks time. So stay tuned, it's Smash Fishing! Woo!